Hello everyone, this is Joshua Haji from Pixelate and I'm here to talk to you about lists. Now, before we begin, please do make sure to hit that subscribe button down below to get notified of our latest updates as well as when new tutorial videos get uploaded. Again, if you see that this video has been useful for you, please don't forget to leave a like or leave a comment down below. Again, without further ado, let's begin! In our previous video, what we talked about is the Quasar table. Now, in the Quasar table, what we discussed is basically table is a group of rows, rather a group of data that are placed within a tabular format. So in our previous example, what we did was we added two rows in our tables as well as we initialized our own table. So as you can see here, we have a table named people and then we have my name as well as a sample name right here. So for this video, what we're going to talk about is list and list items. Now, you might wonder, what is a list and what is a list item? Now, in Quasar's definition, the queue list and queue item are a group of components which can work together to present multiple line items vertically as a single continuous element. So, in perspective, this means is basically you have a single column wherein it contains all the rows of your data. Or rather, to explain further, what we can do is we just we can create an example later so that we can further display what does this mean. So mostly they are best suited for displaying similar data or rather as well as other types of data. So you can use it in a way that you can present it in a form of a list, hence the title the list and list items. One useful example of this is, for example, contact list, you have a playlist or you have a menu. Each row is called an item in Quasar's definition. Also, like the documentation said, queue item can be also used outside of a queue list. So in this definition also, they said that lists can encapsulate items or item-like components. For example, queue expansion or a queue separator. List items have the following pre-built child components, which is the queue item section, which is, for example, you have an item in a list, it has its own sections. And then you have a queue item label, meaning for every item you have its own label. Now, to demonstrate, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the basic example found in Quasar's documentation. So, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to create a list inside a div. And then we're going to add items inside of it. So, to demonstrate, going to our code here, let's go back to our application. And then we assigned a div here, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it inside a queue card. So let's add a queue card here. Now, if we hit save, we're supposed to have a card here, right? Since it doesn't have a, any content yet, so it's not going to display anything yet as of now. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a queue card section. And then we're going to add some sample content here. Now what it's going to do, it's going to display our card which is right here already. Now, what we're going to do this time is we're going to populate it using the list component. So, in order to do that, what we need to do is we need to create a queue list. So we have a queue list here and then let's add a separator line here. So let's add a separator. Now you might ask, what is a separator? Basically, it's a line that divides each rows of a list. Next, therefore, every queue list component that we have, we need to add an item. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an item to it. So let's have an item here. In terms of uh, design capabilities and for better looks as well, what we can do is we can add a clickable to it. We can also add a V ripple to it. So what these things mean is basically our queue item, which is this one, is clickable as well as it throws off a ripple effect as you can see here if we click the item it throws off a ripple effect as you can clearly see based on where i click right now what we're going to do next is we're going to add an item section so what is an item section so this is the part of the list where you add our items itself so for example here we have a content so let's say sample content here so going back to our application now we have a queue list component which is this one which contains a queue item component which is again this one which contains the sample content that we just created so in order to add another item what we're going to do is we simply add another queue item and then we add another queue item section to it so let's see like that and then we add another sample to content here 
So as you can see, we now have two items in our list. The sample content here and then the second sample content right here. But as you can notice, the second item is not clickable because we did not append the clickable right here and then we need to add a ripple effect as well now if we do that as you can see they are now clickable and then if we click here you will also see the ripple effect now since we have our own basic list now as you can see in this example as well we can add some properties to it as well so for example you want your cue card to have a dark background so what we need to simply do is we need to add a dark property to it now, if we do that, as you can see, now we have a dark mode. Our queue list is basically in dark mode as of now. So if we remove it right here, it goes back to normal. So aside from dark, what we can use is also a dense, meaning, uh, let's see, for every item in our list, they are all stacked together without padding at all. So if you see in our example right here, they are really dense. Like there's little spacing in between those two items. But if we remove the dense property, what happens is the padding goes back to normal. If you want that specific functionality, you may as well do it. You can have a dense queue list or you can have a queue list with a lot of padding. So next, what we're going to tackle is the item section. Now, looking at these examples, you may notice that we have an icon to the left, right? You have an icon as well right here. So how does it do that? So basically what it does is it utilizes the item section right here. So if you notice in their example, we have a single queue item with two item sections, an avatar section and then a normal item section right here. So how do you implement such features? So taking this example we have here, we add another item section and then we add an avatar to it. So what does this avatar mean? Basically, it tells Quasar to create an item to the left of our component here. So as you can see, it allocated the space. Now, with this avatar, what you can do is you can create or you can add a queue icon. Icon. And then let's let's say um, home. Let's try home if it works. Yeah, so there's a home. So as you can see, we now have a home icon beside our queue list. And then you can also do that with the other item right here. So we can create another queue item section here. And then we do the same. We append the avatar, avatar property to tell Quasar to put it to the left side or rather in the form of an avatar. And then we add another Q icon to it. Let's say search. Let's see if it works. Yes. Okay. So now, as you can see, we have a list with two items as well as to icons per item. So that is the purpose of item section. So aside from icons, you can also add an avatar type icon. So in their case, what they did to implement that is they added a queue avatar. So instead of a queue icon, they added a queue avatar. And then they set an icon to it. So the icon is home. And then they set a color. Let's say, let's use the color teal. And then the icon is home. So if we go back, as you can see, it is colored teal. And then we append the text color. Let's say white. In order to turn our icon's color into white. So if we do that with the other content here, let's say, let's use a different example. Let's see. Uh, let's use, for example, an image. Okay, so let's use an image. So let's use Quasar's example image, for example. So we grab this one. So instead of an Q icon, what we put is a Q avatar. And then it's, let's set it to rounded. And then we add an image to it. So what happens is, let's, let's write round. Now, there you go. Now, what happens is, in this one, we have a Q avatar with an icon. Meanwhile, for this one, we have a Q avatar with an image inside it. So the avatar section is a bit flexible in terms of customization because you can append certain kinds of elements to it. So aside from the left side, you can also append it to the right side. So in order to implement it to the right side, you simply need to put your item section on the bottom part. So what does that mean? So if we move this one 
to the bottom section here, you will notice that the item or the icon goes to the right. So you will notice that the item section here with the avatar property, rather, yes, the positioning of this section here depends on where you put your content. If you put your content first, like so, what happens is it's placed to the left. But if you put it to the right side, for example, here, what happens is it gets rendered back here, right? So that is one way of positioning your avatar or your queue item sections. So for this example, you can see that they have a side queue item section. So how they implemented such feature is, first they created two sections, or similar to ours, and then they put this unique uh, item section here. So you have the side and the top with the queue, or rather with two item labels and an icon. So if we do that, what, what's going to happen is, instead of avatar, it's going to set it to the side and then the top. Now what's going to happen is it's going to place it to the side and the top most part of our component, right? So that's what's going to happen. Next, what we're going to do is instead of a queue avatar, we're going to use the queue item label and then we're going to add, uh, let's say, one minute ago, something like that. And then we're going to add a queue icon. And then let's use the star icon, like so. So as you can see now, we have our own stuff right here as well. So in order to increase our content, so what we're going to do is we have a very long content right here. Thank you. Something like that. Maybe let's grab the Torrent Ipsum instead. This to populate the text. So as you can see, now we have a long text. And then in order to compress it, what we're going to set is we're going to style our card with a max width, let's say 400 pixels. That should be enough. So as you can see now, we have two lines. So that looks much better. So let's set the color, uh, text color, no, color, simply color, uh, yellow, like so. Okay. Now, by doing so, you can see now we have a line right here, right? But you will notice also that there is a line right here. So in order to implement that, what we need to do is we need to create two queue item sections. So first, item, uh, first item label. And then we're going to add a specific property here, which is caption. If we do that, oh, it's a queue item label. I am sorry. So it's queue item label. And then we have another queue item label here. So we have, okay, so see, we have a queue item section, like so, and then we grab our item labels, which are these two, and then we put them right here. So if we do that, what happens is it becomes like this. So what just happened? So what we did was we created two sections, which is this one and this one, and then we created item labels for those. So this is the first item label, and then the second one is the bottom one. So that's what we did. So aside from that, you can also have an active state to your list or to your list item. So in order to do that, you need to add a, oh, where is it? Let's see. So here, you need to add an active property to it. So in order to do that, your queue item must have a active property and then let's set it to true for example if we set it to true you can see that our item is active but if we set it to false our item is now inactive so in order to better emphasize what we can do is we can add an active class so what happens is if we have an active class whatever class we put here gets included in our item whenever the component is active. So for example, let's say BG teal, something like that. And then let's set it to true. 
just to emphasize. So as you can see, it's active, right? So it appended a specific class when it's active. So in order to make it lighter, let's add a number. So like, uh, as you can see, now it is active. So that is how you set an active state for your list items. So aside from those, you can also have uh, since the rather you can have multiple var multiple variations of your sing of your Q item label. So in this example, what they did is they had multiple line items here. They have a header here, and then they created this. Uh, rather they they created these list items. So if you look through the code, you can see that it follows the same principle. There is an item, and then an item section, and then for every item section you have multiple item labels. And then for the next section, you add another item label. So as you can see, they all follow the same principle. So for every queue list, there's an item, and then for every item, there's a section, and then for every section, there's a label. So that is what the basic, or rather in, in basic terms, that's what the tree looks like mostly or for every item list, mostly because you can customize it the way you want it to. So aside from these examples, here you have a more involved type of example. So we have a contacts list, as you can see here. So what they did is they created a queue list and then they created a queue item, right? So now for each item they have, they had a section. So the section for avatar is this one. So what they added was a queue avatar, right? And then for the next item section, which is the middle one, they appended the name and then the email, right? So here's the name and the email. And then they have another section, which is this one to the right. You have this section here, and then they created an icon. And then they set the color to green. So as you can see, for every item we have here, there are sections. So for you have a queue list, this one. You have a queue list item, which is this one. And then you have, or rather, for each item, you have sections, which is this three right here, right? So for every section, also, you have labels. That's why we have this label one and then this label two. So in essence, that's what the queue list, or the rather, the list component adheres to. So it's, it's uh, in a sense, it kind of follows a similar fashion or, a or similar syntax. So for the settings, for example, you have here these examples. So for this one, what they created is the, the, they created the, the, the common list. And then for this one, instead of a avatar, what they did is they added a checkbox. So if you look at here, you will find that they created a queue toggle. Right? Or right, not, not queue toggle. But here, you have a queue checkbox, right? So that's what they created here. For this one, what they did is they created a list item and then they appended a queue item section and then they added a queue toggle or rather this one. So here you have an item section, which is this one with two labels. So it's this one. And then they added an item section again with a specific toggle, which is this toggle button right here. So for the last example, it follows the same principle as well. So we have three sections here. For the left section, they added an icon. And then the middle section, they added a slider. And then for the last section, they added an icon. So as you can see, it's right here, right? So that's what it is. So basically, it follows the same principles again. For the emails as well, in this example for email, you have a queue list and then a queue item here. So if you look at the code, you have the queue item here, and then you have the item section for the avatar, which is this one, right? And then for the next item section, what they added was label. So they added a label here, and then another label right here. So now you have two labels, which is this line, uh, this line, and then this line below. For the right side, what they did is they added another section for the side and the top. And then they added a text, which is one minute ago, for example, right here. So as you can see, that's how they build this friends list. Now for this one, it follows the same principle as well. 
So you have a section here, item section, and then it has two content. So if we take a look at the code, you have a so the inbox style, and then here we have this one, the Google inbox style right here. So for the Google inbox style, what they did is they created an item here. So for the item section, they added an account or rather an avatar, which is this one. And then after that, they added another section, which is this one. So there, these two are different sections. So section one and then section two. For the third section in the middle, which is this one, they created multiple item labels in order to accommodate those multiple lines you see right here. So for each line here, for example, this one is an item label, this one is an item label, and this one is an item label. So you have a total of three. And then for this last part here, what they did is they added the side section, so the last section. And then what they did is they appended three buttons inside the div. So if you can see, as you can see rather, you have three buttons right here. Okay. So for the photos, or rather for in this case, for this folder, what they did is again the same. So you have three, uh, let's see. We have three item sections right here. So section one, section two, and then three. So for this one, what they did is they created a Q avatar again. So as you can see, they have a Q avatar. And then you have an item label here, which is these two text right here. And then lastly, they have the icon again, which is the info. So looking at these examples, you will concur, or rather you will notice that they all follow the same syntax and they all follow the same principles so they all start with uh, so if we look at examples they always start with a queue list and then for every item in the queue list they add an item and then inside an item you have item sections you can have a multiple item sections inside an item now for every item section you can add as many labels as you want as many labels as you can fit or you can append your own custom components. For example, in this one, an avatar or an icon or a button or whatever you may think of. It, as long as it can fit in the list, it can be rendered there. So basically, that's what the syntax mostly follows. So, and lastly, we're going to tackle here is the list itself can be connected to a view router. So if you look at our previous videos, or in our tutorial video about view router in the previous video, you will notice that in order to route or, or route or in order to route to different pages, you need to create a property in order to redirect, right? So in Quasar's list component, you can append the route directly right here. So as you can see, it's directly connected. So we have a queue item and then we have a two property and then inside is the path itself. So you can also append a object in here, for example, like uh, let's say a router object, you can pass it also to this one as well. That's it for now for lists and list items. If this video has been useful for you, please don't forget to click the like button down below. As always, don't forget to click the subscribe button to get notified of our latest updates as well as our latest tutorial videos. Again, this is Joshua G, Software Engineering Supervisor here at Pixelate. See you later, Pixelators!